Hey fam, thank you for coming back to the channel, Deb Chanel's 40 Swirl, featuring the family affair. Okay, we're going to be talking about the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Y'all know it's already up there on the screen. It's showing little pictures of, you know, our co-stars of the Real Housewives of Atlanta. And this, that, and the third. Okay, it was... Uh, the episode aired was called More More Love, More Problems, Season 12, Episode 20. I don't know really what's going on here because it was really boring as hell to tell you the truth. It really was boring as hell. The only thing that I got really out of it was Todd was trying to really say he ain't happy. He ain't happy with this newfound person or a lap dog. He's seeming to be like for Candy. Okay, Candy bought, paid for him, everything. Took him from his element where he was producing films. Uh, he was producing and he was producing things on television. And that was his mode. That was his life. That's what he loved. This shit Candy got him doing now. I don't know, being a bodyguard. Um, shit, I don't know. I guess he's just a bodyguard. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> really don't know and it's making him a hell of a lot of money but he said he ain't happy hello my goodness speak to us Todd speak to us speak to us speak to us speak on it brother okay so pretty much he was all about blaming candy for everything he's sitting at home being day to day care he ain't happy about it and candy's going on doing her acting career uh doing real housewives of atlanta uh doing uh com not commercials but interviews about the show and what she got going on this and that he don't want to be at home them damn kids okay i'm like well damn you should have told candy you didn't want to have them kids okay ace was enough and you should have kept it right now but now nah, she didn't want to destroy her eggs she wanted to use them up and you like go ahead do the darn thing and then she on your ass every time you try to go to the strip club and this that and third but you know Todd, if you ain't happy you ain't happy go back to doing what you were doing before you met candy and that was filming behind the scenes producing um what do you call it little shows here and there hoping somebody will pick them up and take you along with them but you know you go on this little tirade of you're not good enough you had to make all this money at one time to prove to candace mom to prove to the world oh that's just such a bullshit cop out you know todd you 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 know better do better okay stop feeling sorry for yourself pull yourself up out the dumps and if you want to go back and do what you were doing go on back you don't need to you ain't got to be there tell candy to adjust her schedule accordingly and both of y'all co-parent and go on and get that money however y'all see fit because you know you just gonna bring her down while you down yourself okay but you were bought and paid for you love the life you were living before the kids came and now it seemed like you got the kids and um and, and, uh, you got to be responsible responsible for them half the time and candy doing what she got to do to make the money. Because they calling for candy, candy, candy. They ain't calling for Todd, Todd, Todd. And she's trying to up you every time she get a chance. But, no, it's just like when Whitney Houston was uh, doing her thing. Everybody was hollering Whitney, Whitney, Whitney. Not Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. Bobby just had to be Mrs. Whitney, okay? And, and, and get used to it. But it seems like... Todd kind of feeling himself. He he not feeling that um cool ride anymore. And he know it's more so true that he is living off candy. And the money that he was making before, no, it doesn't come even close to what Candy makes. And the reason why Candy has so much is because of this platform she's on. Because both of them would probably be in the same boat, making the same kind of money. Or Todd would probably be the breadwinner because Candy wasn't really doing that much. She was um what was she doing before the Real Housewives of Atlanta? <laughs> I have to think about that Hilton family because, I, I mean, she was writing for other artists, you know. But you can't put, like, say, I'm going to sell this song, song for 5000 Because we don't know if the artist going to make it work and make it do what it do. Or it could be a flop. But, you know, the song they made for TLC Scrubs, uh, I mean, TLC, uh, the girl group, um, No Scrubs, it, it did happen to do really well. And she's definitely wrote other songs for other different people. But I'm like, 
Come on now. What else were you doing, Candy? Give me your resume, honey. I'm trying to figure it out. Because if that's what you were doing, it was, you know, taking care of the bills and all that kind of stuff. And taking care of whatever you were doing. But it, it was nothing compared to the platform you have now with the Real Housewives of Atlanta. And you know this. Because you stated it before. It came out your mouth on your speak on it. You ain't going nowhere until they release you from your contract. They're going to have to get rid of you. In other words, you're not going to leave on your own accord. Okay. That's that's pretty much what you said. Um, but Todd is not happy. He is definitely not happy. He's not feeling this whole thing that she gets to live a life, meaning his wife Candy. Uh, he accepted her being an actress. Then he gonna say he don't like the man rubbing on uh her body or whatever scene she was filming for the shot. Um, he he didn't like it. <laughs> Todd, 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 you got too much time on your hands. Then he's going to talk about, uh, y'all wanted me to uh, do this trucking company, you know, and I, hell, I ain't trying to drive no trucks. And I'm like, damn, Todd, hell, we were trying to figure that out for you when you were sitting on your own, uh, Instagram, uh, p- social media platform showing us about this truck and this other thing you were going to hook to the truck and y'all get going getting hauling and shit. We already told you that shit wasn't going to work, but you didn't listen to us. You're okay, I don't know who was pushing you, telling you it was a good idea, but to make that truck and shit work, you got to know about that business. You got to go out there and, and live the life for a while to understand what it takes and what it's going to be for you to make that money, okay? So nobody won't be cheating you on the top end or the back end but you weren't interested in that but you wasted money going out there buying this stuff and, and nothing's coming to fruition just like candy had said in um the episode y'all were being filmed on tonight she was saying well uh she didn't stop you from making a film you stopped yourself or a production of a film that was supposed to be coming out or a movie I, hell i don't know what it was but she was getting in your ass about that and then you had an excuse for that so i'm like candy Todd, who child? Y'all gonna be divorced before it's gonna be, you know, y'all for y'all hit what? Maybe fifteen. If y'all don't change y'all ways now, can he's pretty much telling you, look, baby, he wants to do something that's fun. He wants to do something that's more appealing. It didn't make that kind of money, or it didn't make that much money, but that was something he enjoyed. So I'm thinking you need to definitely listen to him before you become, uh, what do you call it? Uh, or ex-wife or some sort are you going to be more crying than you're going to be doing anything else because I know you you about that money you about that dollar honey you ain't going to give up your money for no man okay but you will try to buy him you will try to appease him and all this and, and that but <laughs> Todd is already telling you baby he is not happy he's telling you to do these things because he feel like he need to tell you so social media won't get on his ass because they know and he know We'll come for him, okay? We will definitely come for him, especially when we feel like he ain't towing the toe, he ain't doing the do, and he ain't living up to his part. So if he know he, what he know he need to be doing, he'll accept all expensive gifts. He loves the limelight, but he don't want to put in work when it comes to staying there, taking care of them two kids, okay? Again, it seems like he probably wanted Ace because he wanted to solidify that deal that he got a child with you. Case that thing happen, he can bank on that and, and get paid real royally but to me i don't think he wanted uh, baby blaze she just added to another step that's uh, like anchored him down to where since you're going your career is working real well out there and you're uh seizing the moment copy them and you know what i'm saying but he ain't doing that but he's just like a housewife or a house uh, male daddy daycare and he's not satisfied with that so, Candy, y'all going to have to work it out. You're going to have to listen to him, listen to him, and make some changes. Or um, you're going to be looking at a divorce. I'm just, I'm just going to tell you because Todd is not going to keep telling you. He's going to start acting out because he's a little baby. He, he want his way. He want to go play with his toys. And then he's going to exert himself, and it's not going to be good. So, it just is what it is. But that was the most exciting thing, really, from the episode, of, you know, than what they showed us. Then it was kind of crazy where um, Kenya was talking to her. Now, this is on her father's side, her dad's side, his sister. She's trying to make her 
the designated person to take care of Brooklyn if anything happened to her or more. Okay, which is very funny because I'm like, okay, why would you have Aunt Lisa when you've been dealing with the uh your mother's side for the longest? Y'all remember? I can't remember her her um aunt's name that she always had on the show. Um, uh, did they fall out? Uh, what what happened with her? We don't even see her no more. I don't even know if we saw her in 10, 11. We show sure damn sure ain't seen in uh, season 12. But the favorite aunt that she liked it on her mother's side. Did they have a falling out of some sort? I have a picture in the video that we're seeing now uh, of her. But I can't think of her name to save my life. But anyway, I just found that was weird. Now we're seeing her dad's side of the family now can you do no girl what is going on with you you going back to your dad's side since you can't get your mama's side to act right and then this whole craziness about ma don't want you to see or speak to his parents his mother or dad why did you marry him girl why did you make him mostly uh, when the parents are living of the male that's trying to ask your hand in marriage they always want to take you to see their mother okay and a dad if you got one living in the same household if not you know they can make that happen too they will want you to come see them to get approval in some way i mean they still may marry um the person or whatnot but they still like to give that approval or get that approval from their parents especially their mom and you trying to make us believe mark said that you could not see his parents <laughs> I'm like, why, girl? Why did you marry him? Why did you marry him? If you ain't got the keys to come and see the mother and the uh, uh, dad of your uh, groom-to-be or your forever after man that you so, so call yourself love, that would have been a stumbling block for me right there. Okay, because who am I going to get to watch this baby when I can't watch her? You know what I'm saying? That's when your mother-in-law is supposed to come in. Especially if your mama can't watch the baby. You need the mother-in-law to, to watch the baby. But, hey, he told you you couldn't see them not on no certain terms. So, I'm like, I, I don't understand that, Kenya. Shame on you, Kenya. That's all I can say. Shame on you. Um, so, we that's pretty much about it. Um, oh, Kenya meets with an estate planner, goes over, you know, to the lady trying to tell her she ain't want Ma to have none of the money if anything happened to her, you know. I like Kenya, I'm so sick of you trying to bury this man in the dirt. I'm like, bury yourself along with him, honey, because you can't make this man look ugly in my eyes after you've been upping him since he's been on the show and since you've been trying to bring him on television. Now you just want to act ugly and say he's doing all these nasty things to you. I find it hard to believe, Kenya. I really find it hard to believe, okay? Um... And you go on and tell the state planner that, you know, you tried to have counseling with Ma, but Ma didn't want to do any counseling. <laughs> so you done did all you could and you don't feel like you need to be doing any more. But, you know, that's your storyline you're trying to give us. We don't believe it, okay? It just is what it is. We don't believe it. We feel it's fake, foolery, fuckery, fraudulent, shitty behavior that you got going on with us and wanting us to believe it. We don't want to, we don't, we do not have time. We don't want to believe it, okay? You show us a, a marriage certificate and then we may think different. Other than that, we don't want to hear about it, okay? Um... Portia has this beautiful Marcia Dimes type of luncheon for the ladies and some more ladies. And they go around and tell their story about how hard it was for them uh, to conceive a child. And, of course, Portia gives her little story. Um, Tanya tells her little story. Marlo gives us a little uh, story of how she felt the Lord was giving her something much more of a job to do than being a mother per se. She needed to help her brothers and sisters with their children and uh, help them out as much as they can and be a mother and a father to them or a, mo a mother figure to them so and I was like damn Marlo said uh, she got 16 nieces and nephews I'm like oh my god I thought that was back in the day in my mother's time and my mother's 80 years old would be 81 in May uh, of this year and I'm like I 
you know they still had st- people still want to have big families like that good god but that's the aunt that i'm talking about that kenya favored so much from the beginning or her induction of being on the real housewives of Atlanta. this is on her mother's side what happened to that aunt okay i don't understand that she bringing in this other aunt from her dad's side giving her camera time oh, okay I, I just don't understand but anyway we're gonna move on um uh, that was pretty much it about the luncheon and stuff itself for um Shamia uh was telling us a little story about I, and I kind of got confused I'm like girl did you have a miscarriage or what was going on because you lost me with your story you were trying to tell maybe it was just a hard pregnancy or whatever she was trying to give me I I, I just got lost and I got confused but I, I woke up when she said she called Kenya for some advice or some you know a, a shoulder to lean on or whatnot I'm like Kenya hell why you ain't call Portia or Candy you know what I'm saying I'm confused and Portia was kind of confused and take by surprise herself so Portia said she got to do some uh, digging up the why she thought she needed to call Kenya and not call her she don't care how busy she was but <laughs> Kenya made the excuse and Kenya dropped the beans on that one because it didn't come from Shamia I said see Shamia she finished she finna sew you up into some shit now okay she gonna start a battle with you and Portia but that's just how Kenya gets down she just opens it up and just let it ride you know what I'm saying but that's what that, we ain't gonna even talk about that no more much because it's really too much to talk about um let me see i can't talk okay yeah we we got oh the uh biggest thing um i'm gonna call freaking frat again uh we got cynthia she goes over to visit nini at her little swag boutique they're bonding again i i I really like that they're bonding again they're in the same age group they need themselves to film with and i think it's more plush for them to interact and but you know something got to have a little bit more backbone by herself to be able to handle nini a little bit better if they want to have a better um seeing of the minds or seeing of the eyes of each other um and of course, uh, it seems like Cynthia wants to be back in the fold with Nene. And it was funny. And I don't know what made poor, uh, Nene go outside of her swag boutique, but Portia was, you know, riding around in the parking lot. She ran out there trying to act like she was doing a robot or something. I'm like, good God, Nene just don't know what to do when she's on TV now. But anyway, she goes out to talk with uh, Portia in her Jeep. And, you know, they're just talking, you know, passing shit, you know, the shits with each other. And then Cynthia comes out there and joins them in the parking lot, still talking shit about nothing. And I thought it was fairly cute. I, I, you know, OGs with the young G. So I was like, okay, okay, that's cool. Cool, cool scene. Um, let me see. And that's pretty much it. You know, my highlight of the event was hard trying to tell Candy she needs to sit her ass at home because Candy let Don Juan book her from the time she got back to probably the time she got to go back out to wherever she needs to go film the shot and Todd was like why you didn't tell oh uh, uh Don Juan not to do that uh, I'm like you just want somebody to sit up there and wash them clothes with you and wash them um uh, diapers or or what now you just don't like dad to do it. that's what it is Todd because it you know before this other baby came in the picture and this that third you know Don Juan was booking candy up like it wasn't nobody busy because candy all about that dollar she ain't got time to sit around hell when she was sitting there uh being quarantined for corona she's sitting there trying to make money instead of sitting her ass down you know playing games with y'all talking to y'all and I know you already said it because it was filmed on tv that candy loves to be on on her phone all the time so i'm like you can't stop somebody who's just into technology who wants to be out there thinking she got maybe can got some nervous problems maybe we need she need to see uh some um uh, a physician's advice get some medication on if you feel she has a problem with social media where well, she can't just sit still and be at peace you know what i'm saying she, she got that money driving her crazy okay because oh, is she living above her means i don't know okay you just have to think about these things when you have like mr corona and miss virus running around here it does put a monkey wrench in your businesses and the businesses she got they it really takes a lot of consumers to continue to patron her businesses uh, for them to stay afloat. And not saying she's the only one that's suffering. There's a lot of other uh, restaurant businesses 
or definitely doing the same thing, but at least they have takeout capacity. And um, from what she said, um, Todd basically tried to get them, meaning uh, management, whoever she had go, uh, governing her restaurants or whatnot, that he wanted them to uh, do takeout in some form or fashion. And this was way before the coronavirus had stepped in to all uh, globally. You know what I'm saying? So they didn't listen to him. <laughs> for what reason i don't know why but candy was saying he's gonna be very angry and he's gonna put people in their places and i'm like well you know not necessarily i mean does he have a stake in it or is he just you know leaning to your understanding candy because you should have uh made sure that it got enforced because it was a good idea i thought it was a good idea and, and most people in business would have thought that was a good idea as well hell if real, if real lives are taking uh food to go before the corona hit Y'all restaurant show, but should have take had should have had takeout. Hell, Popo got go uh, takeout. Every other uh, eatery, uh, southern type of cuisine, they got takeout. But anyway, it just is what it is. But that's all I had on this particular video they gave us uh, as the last uh, taping for season twelve. Uh, episode 20 and it was saying something about more love more problems no nah, they should have been titled more money more problems okay forget about the love because <laughs> when you got love and money you're gonna love one and hate the other one it's just about loving god and loving money you're gonna hate one and love the other this is just what it is so candy has to figure it out okay is she gonna continue to support you or you're going to stand up like a man and say, nah, I can't do this no more. I'm going to go back to doing my thing, my film production, uh, me trying to uh, put something together that I can maybe use as a pilot and, and shop around to these networks and see if they, you know, will pick it up, some type of sitcom. You know what I'm going to do? Me. You know, I'm going to make my own money. I'm going to be my own man. That's what you should do, Tom. So you, you, you like both worlds, okay? You like being in control and you like to share and indulge in Candace's money. Okay, and it just is what it is because you said so yourself. You're not happy and you have to feel like you have to make all this money to compete with Candy. Okay, and I'm like, if, if, if Real Housewives of Atlanta drop Candy today, once the money exhausts itself, y'all probably on the same playing field, okay? So you got to look at it that way. If you don't want Candy to be on the Real Housewives of Atlanta, just tell her, quit the show, okay? And then we'll see how y'all fare then, all right? Since you want her to just drop all these opportunities so you can do what you want to do, Todd, then go ahead, let her throw caution to the wind. Just tell Candy to quit Real Housewives of Atlanta. You're going to pick up the slack. You're going to go and make TNT, me and Todd Tucker Productions, you know, hit a home run. <laughs> okay? And see how fair, how well that fares with Candy Burrs. Okay? Let's see if she going to like, okay, I'm going to let you take care of me. And yeah, I, I, I believe in you so heartedly. Yeah. She ain't going to let Real Housewives of Atlanta go. Okay? And you're not going to really want her or even try to tell her to let it go, Todd. That's just you talking. Just going to get you another drink <laughs> gonna take a shower and go nap nap time okay because the baby's probably trying to nap too as well but y'all that's all i had of this hilarious type of last episode for season 20 that they're giving us and they're saying they're going to be taping it online so it's going to be like a skyping type situation for the reunion so that should be interesting should be very interesting okay but that's all i got y'all get down in those comments tell me what y'all feel about subject matter tonight and like i said uh between <laughs> todd cutting up saying what he didn't like what he don't feel like and how he feel and put all his emotions on the screen today and then kenya doing something you know i, I don't know where she going with her storyline uh these days uh she's just like nene trying to scrape and scoundrel uh some type of storyline to keep her interesting and look at all that hair of hers y'all think that's hers or y'all think that's added hair i don't know go figure get in the comments and let me know okay but other than that i will see y'all next video y'all be blessed